In this tutorial, we are going to talk about movements, rotation, and scale. But before we do, I just want to talk about this little window that I have uh, down here. This window is here so that you can see um, the shortcut keys that I press on my keyboard. So in case if you don't understand um, the shortcuts I'm pressing, you can just look down here and see what shortcuts I've pressed. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the move tool the rotate tool and the scale tool. The shortcut for these are very simple. These icons are located on the top left of your screen and for that reason the shortcuts on your keyboard are W, E, R. W representing move tool, E representing your rotation tool and R representing your scale tool. When you look at the tools up here you will realize that some of these tools have a black arrow at the bottom right corner that means that if you click and hold on those icons, there is a menu that will expand and it will give you other options or other methods to use that tool. You can see that over here we have similar uh, situation as well. I'm going to create a teapot by clicking and dragging on my screen and then I'm going to select my move tool. I can do that by either clicking on it or I can press W on my keyboard to select it. Once you select any of these tools and you have an item selected, you will see a gizmo appearing. These icons, these shapes that you see on the screen, we refer to them as gizmos. You will also see three main colors in these gizmos, red, green, and blue, representing X, Y, and the Z axis. You also see the color yellow. Yellow represents the axis which is selected. This means if I wanted to move the teapot on the X axis, I would have to go on the X axis and make sure that only the red axis has turned yellow. And only then if I click and drag, I'll be able to move the teapot in that specific axis. So let's do that in the green axis and also the blue axis. You can also use multiple axes in combination of each other. You can click and hold on the square ne next to um, Z and X, for example, and move it up and down, left and right at the same time. You will also be able to do the same with the rotation tool. So whichever axis turns yellow, that's the axis that will um, be activated. What I'm also doing is I'm pressing Control Z to go back. So in order to undo what I've done, I press Control Z. You can use the same shortcut in many other applications such as Microsoft Word, Photoshop, almost any other application you use is pretty much a universal shortcut. Um, the next thing is the scale tool. Scaling in the Y axis, scaling in the Z axis, so the x-axis and the z-axis. If you go to the center of this, you'll be able to scale everything uniformly, which means everything, the x, y, and z, they all scale up uh, within the same measurements. You also have this icon over here, which is your selection tool. You could select objects by using your move, rotate, and scale tools. If I create multiple teapots here, I could select my move tool and select them one by one. But if I'm not very careful, and which is the case with new users of 3ds Max, I could click and drag slightly without noticing, and that will move my teapot as well. If you don't want that to happen, you can have your selection tool on, which only selects, and even if you click and drag, it won't do anything. It won't move your object, which is really good for those who begin. The shortcut for that is Q. So technically speaking, um, sorry, I'm just going through this list because this list is the list with a um, black triangle at the bottom right corner which gives me this menu and to talk about this menu actually um, this is the type of your selection so if you look at my screen if you want to click and drag what I do have is a square box if I go to the next one I'm just pressing Q to go through these if I go to the next one it's creating a circle selection the next one will allow me to click and drag and create a shape of my own. The next one doesn't require me to keep clicking. I can just click and drag and it will give me selection I want. And the next one spray. I can spray over the objects that I want to select and it will select them. You, I prefer using the rectangular selection anyway. You also have this icon over here. This icon means 
if your selection touches the object, the object will be selected. That means if I have a selection like this on this teapot over here, even though I'm not fully covering the teapot and I'm only touching the teapot with, with my selection tool, it will select the teapot. However, if I click on this item and the box move inside the selection, that means the objects that I need uh, that I want to select, they must be in my selection. That means if I click and drag and don't fully cover the teapot like this and just have it like this, that will not select my object. If I click and drag and make sure the entire object is within the, the, the selection area, that will then select it. In this case, if I was to make sure that I fully select this teapot here, but I roughly select the other one, this teapot gets selected and this one teapot doesn't. So now I can go get my move tool and move this around. Personally, I prefer this option, but that's up to you as it's a personal preference.